As a parent and former teacher, I hear this one a lot. How the kids are taught to subtract nowadays is just so much different from how we were taught to subtract. Let's take a look more closely at the old way that we learned and the new way that most of our kids are learning and see if we can find any similarities between them. In the old way, we would just subtract two minus two is zero and three minus one is two and come out with a difference of 20. Nowadays, our kids are taught more to count up from 12 to 32. So that on paper, it looks more like this. Well, I start with 12, I can add three, and that'll get me to a benchmark of 15. From 15, I can add another five to that, and that'll take me to my next benchmark of 20. From 20, I know I need to jump up to 30, so I can add another 10 to that, and that takes me to 30. 30 is almost 32, so I just need to add another two to that, and that takes me up to 32. Then they can look at the column of values that they counted up from 12 to 32 to find out what the difference is. Three plus five is eight, eight plus 10 is 18, plus two more is 20. So that way they come up with 32 minus 12 to give us 20. In this case, that does add a lot of extra steps to what's a pretty straightforward problem. But what if we thought of it in terms of money? Most of us at some point have been tasked with counting change and not having a cash register to tell us how much to give back. So if we had somebody buy an item for $1.41 and they paid us with a $5 bill, if we did it the more old fashioned way that most of us taught, that would involve a lot of borrowing. So when I would do that, when I borrowed, 10 minus one would give me nine, nine minus four would give me five, four minus one would give me three, and we would give them change of $3.59. Now, if you've ever had a count change on the spot, you know you normally don't have a pencil and paper to write that down and keep track of all that borrowing. And in your head, that's easy to jumble together. So most of us, if we had a count change, we would start with, okay, they bought an item for $1.41. Well, let's see. My net benchmark would be 50 cents. So that is nine cents away. So part of their change is going to be nine cents and that takes me up to $1.50. Well, from $1.50, I can give them another 50 cents in change, and that'll take me up to a benchmark of $2. So 50 cents becomes part of their change. From $2, I know I can go all the way up to $5 by giving them another $3 in change. So $3 becomes part of their change. So without doing that borrowing, but counting up like our students now do, we came out with that same process in our head and they got a total of $3.59 and change. And we did it by counting up. The biggest difference that I think parents aren't used to is seeing this process written out on paper instead of it happening mostly in your head.